You all have this shit eating grin like you did something and you haven't done shit. And these fucking the YouTubers. Good morning, YouTube. Thank you for the comments from yesterday. They don't like this group. They think you're less than. They happen to be right, but the um, you saw the movie on fear last night. What was the takeaway? Anybody? That's why I don't let you talk to each other. Because you got nothing positive to say to one another. You're hoping when you tell them about your mistake that they've got a bigger mistake. Then it makes you feel a little better. That's why we don't allow one another to swap intellectual spit. Which is probably the only seminar on the planet that doesn't use the venue as a networking event. Because networking is moronic for losers. Your networking is going to be making cold calls. And when your brother, who's a lawyer, wants to help you, thanks, Tubby, but no thanks. And when your father knows a banker, thanks, Dad, but no thanks. And when your cousin, and et cetera, et cetera. And when your chairman wants to fill the board up with all his mates, which is an easy, that's, that is your exit right there because you be, will be long gone after he fills the board with his deal, with his people. And there's a reason why we do all these things, because over 24 years, next month, we, we've tried every permutation. And the permutations for these seven steps are the ones that work, and work effectively. And every year, every month, every seminar, I changed slides last night, because this group is especially slow. I had to put some other fucking modules in. I was hoping, because hope, even I, hope springs eternal. I hope and pray. Every seminar, maybe this group. Not in the cards. And we're getting more snowflakey and more snowflakey. God almighty. And like I said yesterday, you know why I know that aliens have never come here? Because they look down and say, what? These guys are fucked up. Why do we want anything to do with them? And we, you know, it's, it's, but you follow these steps. And I told you that we have a new uh, uh, joke. A guy from Macedonia went from step one to step five. Skipped the th three steps. And so we now call it the Macedonia model for retardation. The Macedonia, in fact, the whole East Estonia, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, and whatever other countries are there, which I forget now, because they all look alike to me. So we call it the Macedonia uh, model for retardation. And, uh, I, and, and as I said last night, or the, I think I said uh, yesterday, I'm not here to hurt your feelings, but I will. I'm not doing it on purpose, but like yesterday in the, one of the first slides, if you're offended by some of the things, blame your, mo your parents for raising pussies. For raising pussies, and um, the um, I also said that the reason why Israel is pretty squared away, um, and I've got no axe to grind there, although I've been partners with the Israeli government, is because they have mandatory military. And normally, the countries that have mandatory military um, are a little better, less snowflake, and uh, and more squared away for the QLA model, the QLA model. And I detest when I see uh, people call their uh, seminars uh, boot camps, especially since none of these guys have ever been in the military. They would know a boot camp would bit them in the dick. And this isn't a boot camp either. But in the 90s, it was closer to a boot camp because we, we had some physical things that we did. Plus, I used to whack the kids. I mean, physically. And uh, we've had kids come here. I want to remember this seminar forever. Please hit me. So I did. Seven months later, when they unwired their jaw, 
unwired it, and they've been eating through a straw. I guess they did remember me. I guess they did. But we don't do that now. I'd be in court all the time. No matter if I got you to sign a release, about the third month that your jaw's wired, somebody get a hold of you like him, the Shylock lawyer, and oh, you know, you could you can retire off this. Just like the guy on the plane, the Delta plane, which I don't, I'm not going to, I don't have enough time to get all the death threats when I tell you what I really think about that deal. But um, the, uh, so what else about the movie, about, about the documentary thing that you saw last night about fear? Yes. Um, it can be unlearned and you can um, be made to react the correct way with, with better practice. What was that last word? Practice. <laughs> Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And you can unlearn. And for the young kids, it's easier to unlearn because they have less baggage. For the older guys, it's more difficult, but not impossible. You can unlearn stuff, I mean, up until you die. You know, if you're in the 80s, 90s, or 100. Anything else about uh, fear? It's falsely triggered sometimes because we don't live in uh, cave, cave time anymore. Yeah, I, I, I came about 10,000 years late. 10,000 years late. Just whack them in the head, you know, take their woman, their food, burn their children. I just was born late. But I'm doing the best I can with the environment that I'm in, that I got dropped in. They ask us, one of the podcasts I was on a, a couple years ago, uh, this is one of the questions. If you were dropped on a, in the planet someplace uh, naked with, uh, with uh, only a laptop, uh, uh, how would you start again? What would you do? How would you survive, et cetera, et cetera? Of course, you know, if you're dropped naked, it's not likely you'll have a laptop. But, I mean, the society today is so used to laptops or handheld or whatever. And so I, you know, I said that I'd, uh, I'd go and I'd find the richest guy I could find and I'd hit him in the head and take his fucking, you know, and uh, take, uh, cut his thumb off because he probably has thumb activated shit and cut his thumb off and I'd go take the money out of his bank accounts. <laughs> and he said, you know, you're the first person to ever answer my question that way. They talked about putting a plan together a business plan. Have you ever seen a business plan that failed on paper? No. By definition, they always succeed. And that's why we don't do business plans here. And people will ask you, I'd like to see a business plan. The Germans love the business plans. Yeah, but we don't do them. So he's going to go through withdrawal. Today we're going to see um, here on the webinar one of the guys that's willing to talk to you, he's a German, ex-Luftwaffe officer, and um, he's a good guy. And uh, the um, for the German, well, he's very German. Uh, it's pretty obvious. You could stand, see him standing in a picture next to Hitler, basically, or Goering, or any of those guys. And um, but he's a good guy. Um, and he's he's going to relate because he just finished the seminar in. February, he's going to relate the trials and tribulations of putting this thing into practice in Germany. Because people say you can't do it in Germany. People say you can't do it in the Eastern Bloc countries, which is all bullshit. That's their excuse. People say, I've had kids do this in Nigeria. I have a kid doing it in Nigeria as we speak. Uh, but as I said yesterday, the countries that have the most corruption, it's the hardest. Because you don't, it's difficult to factor in corruption into those steps. Not impossible, but it's, it's tough. It's tough. And if, you can see from the step, there's a lot, the first part of the seminar and the first part of the program when you get out there is, is building your self esteem. That's what those steps are. You know, uh, new rules, focus on the ends, get comfortable, clarify your vision, building perception. The, uh, and when you show up, we're going to uh, talk to people, and we're going to look at slides that when I showed up in a three-piece suit, and I'm not suggesting you all get three-piece suits, but when I showed up in a three-piece suit, uh, and they were wearing uh, 
um, a uh, golf shirt and a pair of slacks, for the first 30 minutes, all they do is apologize for the way they're dressed. And then you've got them. And then you've got them. Then you follow the little templates that you get, and the eight gigs, and then you've got them. And there's, they don't have a chance. And that's why it's called quantum leap advantage. You have an advantage. Only, this is the mafia model, except you're not putting a gun in their mouth. They don't have a chance. And that's the extra bit of leverage you need, especially for the kids, because the kids aren't used to. They don't have any exposure because your parents didn't train you to go take money from banks in a legal way. Some of your parents uh, might, may have told you, uh, taught you how to rob banks and liquor stores and stuff, that kind of thing, but uh, in a legal way. So in that regard, you're starting from scratch because you have no, no experience and you have nobody in your family that has ever experienced QL, unless you happen to have a brother or a dad or a sister or something that's come through the program, which we have. We are now dealing with second generation guys, the children of the kids I trained 24 years ago. And so they more or less have a, a, an idea. And uh, we, we um, get requests every seminar. They want to send their 10-year-old here, their 11-year-old, their 12-year-old. And we don't we, the youngest we'll take is 15. And um, it's, it's, it's difficult to measure how mature you are at 15. Um, but we tried to get mature 15-year-olds. But um, we, we made a couple errors in that regard. And um, they, uh, they're not that mature. Um, the, uh, and w the youngest I think we had is he, he just turned 14 in recent years. And it's, it's difficult because they have so many distractions. The biggest challenge for the kids is to give up all their social media shit. And the games and all the, the stuff that you do on social media that I don't have any uh, idea of what it's about. A anything else about fear? It's uh, contextual. So with that, the fake uh, animals uh, put <clears throat> their hands and they couldn't tell if it was real or wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, was this the one where the, um, the, uh, the couple was walking down and a, a guy popped out in the alley? Yeah. yeah. Now, that's not how I would have handled that at all. <laughs> yeah. Where I come from, that's not what you do. No. You know? The, um, but... This, yeah, that's right. And the guy was a Hispanic guy, wasn't he? He jumped out. Racist fucking film. But anyway, <laughs> and the, yeah. The, uh, and the couple was a white and a black. I mean, do you notice all the commercials you see now? The, the couples are, 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 are uh, mixed race. You obviously know why. But I mean, the, uh, as a percentage of commercials, it's probably 10 times greater than real mixed race couples that there are in the, on the planet. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I mean, we, want, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And, and in a group picture, you'll have an Asian, you'll have a black, you'll have a, a white, you'll have, you know, uh, and the, uh, because we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to offend anybody. Um, I had forgotten it was Easter Sunday yesterday. The, um, and, uh, at the, uh, I just, you know, it's not important. And um, last year, about this time, because I had also forgotten it was Easter, and when I said, I wonder if anybody would come over Christmas, for those of you that watch the YouTubes, and uh, the, within 72 hours, we had 50 people that were, wanted to come to the hardcore over Christmas. And so um, we, we did a hardcore seminar, not that last Christmas, but the Christmas before, and um, the, uh, we arrived on Christmas Eve, and they left on January the 3rd. So um, the, um, and not everybody, and when we talked about it, when the kids were here, it was full house, um, not everybody likes Christmas because of the downtime. You can't get shit done, or you can get shit done, but it's very difficult to get shit done because people don't return your calls, et cetera, et cetera. So this coming Christmas, we're going to have and then we had a hardcore in October, but this coming Christmas we're going to have another hardcore. Um, the, uh, and some guys want to be away from their family over Christmas. YouTube. Who'd have fucking thought it? 
They don't want to sit there in front of the Christmas tree and open fucking presents with the kids crawling all over them. But you've been brainwashed to believe that's what you do over Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever the religious, religious holidays are. That's part of your default. In whatever religion you are, you've got your own. You've got your own. A lot of guys, a lot of fathers, don't want to do that shit. Conventional wisdom forces them into it. Political correctness forces them into it. Just as political correctness and conventional wisdom force you into all kinds of other shit, most of which uh, makes you less efficient, less productive. Less productive. productive. And for those that aren't going to follow the roll-up system with QLA, you're going to make your lives much more efficient. You're going to find out just how much time, when you have to list how much time you waste on a daily basis, you will not, you, you can't even fathom how much time you waste. And nobody's 100% honest, because you may think people are going to ask uh, in this group, like in all groups, is me going to the gym um, productive? And these aren't six packers. I mean, these are regular people. Uh, is, um, um, and you'll ask these questions. If you have to ask the question, then you shouldn't be going to the gym. Most of you exercise for all the wrong reasons. And we'll talk about what I believe are some of the right reasons and why I'm, though I'm going 72 in a couple months, <clears throat> I don't believe I look 72. I know I don't act 72. I know, uh, I think I commented yesterday, I had on my full big physical that I have twice a year, and they came back, all my bloods, blood panels, etc. fit for 50. So I'm biologically uh, 50. I think I'm biologically younger than that, but, you know, um, the um, fit for 50. I'm sure that if we took your um, blood panels, that most, notwithstanding the, who, who's the, oh, the fucking moron here, uh, 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 low glycemic and all that shit, you're the guy, right? Glycemic, uh, low glycemic food. Uh, uh, we have given people that say that they uh, need to be gluten free, we've given them gluten. We've given Muslims pork. And nobody fucking died. Nobody even could tell. I'm allergic to this. I'm allergic to that. Just give it to them anyway. Let's see. If, let's, see let's see. Let's see. If, let's see if we can get somebody. Die. The only thing we don't. If you're peanut sensitive, because people do die from. If you're sensitive to peanuts, we don't do that. Because back in the '90s, we had some uh, bad episodes. <laughs> Guy's face blows up, you know, and he looks like uh, uh, Cyclops. But that's all bullshit. So for those of you that are on strict food regimens, why don't you look better? Warren Buffett eats cheeseburgers and, and, and cherry Cokes all day long. Warren, I'll be with you. Bye, YouTubers. <laughs>